Welcome to Transformers the Show. Um, we've got a very special guest today. We've got Simon Furman, um, the marvelous writer and creative writer behind a lot of the Transformers stories from G1, Marvel UK, and Marvel US, and of course, um, IDW and other franchises as well, from like Doctor Who to the X Men, uh, I think in television cartoons and um, other stories, a whole plethora of amazing stories out there. Um, you've got your host, um, myself, Jamie, um, Andy, and Alexis. Um, I'm just going to start off with the sort of first question, um, Andy. <laughs> we asked some of the people who uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram for for their questions for you as well. One question that came up from uh, a friend of ours called Drew uh, was, if there are Transformers fans who obviously know you through Transformers, who maybe don't know uh, some of your other work, uh, where would you say would be a good point for them to kind of to jump on and see the kind of work that you have done? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, you know, there's a whole bunch of, whole slew of stuff I did for Marvel back in the 90s and noughties. You know, there's I, I did a long run on Alpha Flight from something like issue 110 through to 130 and, uh, you know, a, a whole bunch of what ifs and, uh, and you know, and so there's a, there's a body of work. I did some She-Hulk stuff. There's a, a, there's a body of Marvel work, you know, Annihilation Ronan and a few others. Um, but, you know, the, really, I mean, the body of my work, the main body of work is Transformers. But then, you know, on top of that, there's some work on the Doctor Who comic strip. I did one of the big Finnish audios. Um, you know, I've, I've worked on all sorts of other licensed titles and um, non-licensed titles. And, you know, I'm currently, say, working for um, with Rebellion on... Um, their monster fun comics so uh, leopard from lime street is my strip in that and that's that's fun for me because that was the strip i enjoyed and read you know as a teenager so that that's kind of fun and it's also fun because it was almost always seen like the british spider-man so we're having great fun you know sort of dropping some proper villains into the strip so you know i mean it's it's the there's, there's almost too much to encapsulate into a quick chat. But, you know, I mean, in TV animation, I've worked on Beast Wars, uh, Roswell Conspiracies, Alien Myths and Legends, uh, Dan Dare, X-Men Evolution, uh, Matt Hatter Chronicles. So there's a whole swathe of that as well. And I write currently for Earth Wars, Transformers Earth Wars, the game. And you know, I'm doing a bunch of other games work at the moment. So, yeah, you know, it's it's hard to kind of say, go <laughs> here. You know, I've worked on a lot of different things. You know, I've, I've worked on Robocop. I've worked on Terminator comics, you know. So there's a, there's a great swathe of other stuff that's non-Transformers. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Fantastic. Dan Dare stood out there because my dad used to tell me bedtime stories of Dan Dare and Darth Vader was always the bad guy in those bedtime stories. So Dan Dare's got a small place in my heart there. Um, <laughs> following on from that, we've got um, a, a question from uh, from Bisto, Bisto Yeti, another another YouTuber. Um, he, he asks, uh, I guess you know, off, off the back of that, um, can you can you drop us any, anything specific about uh, the Astro Bot comic which is coming out? Or have you got anything you want to share on that at all? Yeah, you know, Astrobots is um, it's based on a toy line, a, a very, you know, high end, quite intricate toy line developed by a guy called Aaron Thomas. Um, and they just contacted me and said, would you help us flesh out the world, the backstory, the, you know, the, 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 the whole sort of universe that they wanted to set up? I mean, obviously, they had ideas coming in that I just said well that's great we could do this and that and and you know it's, it's real sort of it, it's it's almost i mean even though they are mechs robots it's very much got a more sort of 
sci-fi sweep, I suppose, than Transformers. You know, it's less focus on action adventure and more on political intrigue and, you know, the world that's set up. I mean, the, you know, the, the gist of it is that in the future, Earth is pretty much tapped out and they send out missions into space to find colony worlds. And what they send first are these um, initially non-sentient robots that, you know, are there to find new worlds, to set up cities on those worlds. And then through a, a few things I won't share at the moment, everything gets changed and the astrobots themselves become the dominant life form on these colony worlds and suddenly it's a question of how welcome are these human colonists going to be when they finally arrive so you know there's a lot of you know there's a whole political structure and and then there's a a, a sort of disaster that's happened somewhere else that feeds into this you know it, it's quite multi-layered and it started off originally we were just going to do a series of 10 page stories but very quickly that turned into a five issue limited series. So there's one limited series coming out, which is five issues. And that's the, the first hundred pages of Astrobots. But we're already talking about arcs two and three of that. So there's, there's a real momentum behind it. And yeah, the first issue comes out in March, I believe. You know, you can still order the first issue from your local comic store up to February 20th. And, uh, I think the first issue hits towards the end of March. Awesome. Right, we'll put that link in Twitter. How did TF UK Con, that was the convention, go last year? What were your highlights? Yeah, it was a it was a really fun convention. You know, sometimes you never know with the smaller one day ones. You know, you've got to pack up all your stuff, move across the country, and you know, give up your weekend sometimes, but. You know, it was a really fun little convention, you know, nicely, you know, nice amount of people. So it felt less like a convention and more like a kind of social event. And, you know, it was just genuinely pleasant. Both Jeff and I really enjoyed it. It didn't have some of the pressures, I guess, from, you know, you're chained to your desk all day. We just wandered off at one point and had lunch and and it was just very relaxed and uh, and it was great just to sort of chat with everyone. The meal was fun in the evening. So, yeah, it was it was uh, a really, really good little sort of convention. And I'm, I'm looking forward considerably to this year's and being there with Andrew Wildman. Fantastic. Thank you. When you think about all the different conventions you go to, the short ones, the small ones, the longer ones, what is what's the core favourite part of those conventions? Well, I mean, I think it's definitely the social side of it, the meeting people. You know, we we operate sometimes in, in semi or complete isolation and we never really get that sort of feedback from people. You know, you sit, I sit here and write, I send it off to an editor or a or a story editor or a production editor. And, you know, you work in a little bubble most of the time. I mean, sure, there's kind of internet feedback, but it doesn't beat actually kind of meeting people and, and talking to them about the comics and what they're enjoying, what they're not. And, you know, it just, it, it just you know, we do sit in our little caves sometimes, us comic creators. So the best bit for me is just to get out, meet, chat to people and, you know, just get that, that buzz of being around people who, well, hopefully are enjoying what you're doing. Oh, we do. I'm going to take the question back to um, uh, a little bit of Transformers. So in, in the G1 Transformers UK comics, and obviously when you did the work with the US version as well, you always um, had a great way of taking what seemed like fairly minor characters or toys that didn't really necessarily get a lot of attention and turning them into really memorable characters through the comic book. Uh, I'm thinking of characters like Bludgeon, uh, which obviously has become a massive fan favourite. Thunderwing uh, is another one that jumps to mind, if only because I love Decepticons. Um, what was it about those particular toys or those particular characters that made you choose them? Well, often we had to, in the first instance, when we were writing the UK stories, we had to look for characters, if we could, that uh, Bob Budiansky wasn't using over in the American stories because obviously we had a freer reign with those characters 
So something like Broadside, Sandstorm, Springer, they, they weren't really used by Bob in any big way. So we could we could form them into a team and call them the Wreckers in a, in a, enough confidence that Bob, a future story of Bob's wasn't going to kind of pull the rug out from under us. So, you know, it was great to find some of these characters that he hadn't been able to squeeze in, you know, and I always felt for Bob because he had to continually bring the next toy line in and the next and then just kind of more or less discard the last characters. So we often took, you know, the characters he discarded, you know, to a certain extent, like the Dinobots, they disappeared out of the US storyline and we had a freer reign to work with them. And so, yeah, we were always looking for somewhat the fringe characters who weren't maybe the front and centre G1 characters. And, you know, then later when, you know, I came to be working on it, what I found by them was I, it was more satisfying because Bob did such a, a comprehensive job of creating the personalities, the weaknesses, the strengths. Some of the later characters, they weren't covered in the same detail. So we could we we could let put those layers on ourselves. So someone like Bludgeon, there wasn't much other than his toy tech specs. And we could really start to go, well, look, hey, there's this weird Cybertronian martial art. So let's run with that a little bit and make him a little more, I suppose, sort of metaphysical as a character. So, you know, it was always looking for where's the wriggle room for us to to layer on to what's already there. So those obscure characters were blank templates for us to a certain extent. I um, suppose the, the popularity of them shows that uh the, sorry, the popularity of them shows that you obviously did a really good job there. <laughs> sorry, go yeah, on, um, Alexis. Oh sorry, go on, sorry. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say yes, you know, I mean that's in, in a way, because we had a freer reign, you get more invested in those characters. You know someone else isn't gonna come in and take all that away so you could you you can actually propel them through story arcs and and different things that you possibly couldn't with again some of the more front and center characters fantastic just to continue the flow on that really my my question um my personal question is um which other transformer stories um did you did you love look up to uh and, and why well i mean you know we were always very aware of what the uh, Marvel America were doing. And, you know, we had to be, we were lacing our stories into those. So, you know, we, we really wanted to kind of make it seem to the readers of the UK comic that it was all one through storyline, not American and English stories meshing. So, you know, we were always trying to keep within the vein of what Bob was doing over on the US comic. So, you know, we, we, we kept watch, but, you know, Bob did some great stories in there. You know, his return to Cybertron was the spur to many of my stories with Straxus and other characters. So, you know, they, they were very important. And Underbase came, became part of Regeneration One. So, you know, we were always looking at what Bob was doing with a view to, well, can we expand on that? How does that fit with what we're doing? Can we, you know, entwine the two storylines even tighter and you know just generally then you know the i think the bit of storytelling that impressed me most was the beast wars animated tv series once i was aware of that because there just seemed to be real drive and 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 just sort of proper sci-fi storytelling behind it humor you know and then oh they look they've started to take it and immerse it back into g1 and I found that very sort of inspiring as well, just watching what Bob and Larry and the other writers were doing over on Beast Wars. Thank you, Simon. What are you looking forward to this year? And what one piece of advice would you give to someone attending a convention for the first time? Well, taking the first one, uh, this year, I mean, I'm looking forward to, you know, getting back out on the road which you know sort of it goes into a kind of winter lull really so you know i'm i'm off on the road i'm i'm at london comic con at the beginning of march um i'm going to be 
at a couple of other unannounced conventions yet, and then of course TFUKCon, uh, and you know it, it's it's definitely that's what I'm looking forward to most in some ways is just getting back out, but also bringing with me some of the new things I'm doing, like Astrobots, which is very exciting. I'm also gearing up for another self-publishing uh, venture. Uh, we had To The Death, which obviously we still have and still take to conventions with us. But we're, I'm releasing a, um, a a crime noir graphic novel with an artist called Martin Stiff, uh, which is called Five Points. Quite a change of pace for me. But I think you kind of know if you've seen my Transformers writing that I love sort of detective fiction, crime fiction, and I've laced that into stories with Nightbeat and other characters and so this is this was just a chance martin um he's, he's only done a couple of things but they're both quite sort of different to my usual fare you know he's done a, a one graphic novel called tiny acts of violence and another called the absence and i kind of felt i just had to if i was going to work with him i needed to do something more in the vein of those and uh Five points, like I say, is is quite a, you know, it, it's a one shot graphic novel, and you know, hopefully, we'll build to more of those. So I'm very excited. We're going to go um, the route of printing uh, via Amazon their print to order scheme. So we will be releasing, and it will be available worldwide, you know, on a print to order basis. So again, it's a sort of new thing for us. We did to the death slightly differently, but with this. We're, we're looking to say, well, look, it's just available worldwide. You don't need to go to a comic store or order on, you know, a, a comic website. It's just an Amazon product. And the great thing with print to order is, you know, you literally order it one day, it's printed and it comes the next day. So uh, very excited about that. And, uh, <laughs> and just generally, like I say, getting out on the road, meeting people and, you know, in the second part of your question i would say to people coming to a convention you know come come with stuff you want to get signed you know don't sort of uh, forget you know, the number of people who turn up at my table at conventions and say you know i really meant to bring my death's head collection with me or my dragon's claws you know bring them out bring them signed you know it's there we go yeah <laughs> that's you, you know, <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I always at conventions have stuff with me. I normally bring a comic box or two and other stuff. But, you know, definitely if you've got a kind of treasured comic that you want to get signed, bring it along with you. I'm always happy to do it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. My question, I'm, I'm going to ask a, a more of a personal question here. Um, because you are still so involved, uh, thankfully, in, in, in so much of the, the Transformers franchise and the writing for it, uh, my favourite character uh, and toy for, as a child was always uh, Double Dealer, who featured in this kind of one-shot story that, that you wrote for the UK comic. Is there any chance, do you think, that uh, you could sneak him into a future story where he doesn't get killed very rapidly? Because that tends to be the case with him in most of the media I've seen recently. Yeah, we're using him in Earth Wars at the moment. He's one of the characters they've introduced into the game. So the little saga stories that run parallel to the game, he's one of the characters I kind of feature whenever I can because he's a fun um character who i never really dealt with much on the original comic a bit like um punch counterpunch who i'd never used before yeah. but was absolutely perfect for transformers 84 so yeah you know definitely a chance that you know i'll use him in other media depending on what i'm doing on transformers in the future i'll keep my fingers crossed <laughs> first part's my question the second part's you in cams really from from facebook um so it, obviously you, you created Death Heads, Death Heads, which is an amazing character. So Ewan's question is: If there was a live action uh, <laughs> version or like animation of Death's Head, who would you get? Who would you like to voice act Death's Head, really? And then and my my question is: If you've got the chance to create a brand new Transformers character in, in modern in in modern uh, writing, um, who would, who have you got any ideas about who they would be and what their abilities would be? Yeah, I mean Death's Head. I, you know, I've had this question before, and. For some reason, and don't ask me why, and it's not a specific actor, I always thought he'd work well with a sort of roboticized Slavic accent, you know, sort <laughs> of 
not not quite sort of not quite Dolph Lundgren, but you know, kind of like quite sort of measured and he talks in quite a stilted way. So I thought, you know, he would probably be quite a slow, specific speaker. And for some reason, it always seemed to work better in my head if he had a slightly, you know, sort of Eastern European accent. But I don't really have a specific actor in mind. <laughs> and always, I mean, I'm always looking, you know, I mean, with To the Death, we introduced a whole new cast and world of characters. And we did our, uh, our own sort of bounty hunter killer called Killer Toa, who appears in that. And, you know, again, you know, I love I just love these sort of merciless killer types. They they're they're always fun to write, but, you know, always with a hopefully with a slight twist to them. And, you know, I think in future media, I, I, I'd i go I'd go back to that and just sort of bring in, you know, another character like that. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe like a Eastern European James L. Jones, like a. <laughs> <laughs> you spent some time with Jeff Senior at the last convention, and he's like one of my favorite artists ever. And he bought me a pint, so I absolutely love the guy. He's, <laughs> he's amazing. What is your favorite people you like to catch up with? You talked about being in a bubble and getting to see your fellow, you know, people you work with, the writers, the inkers, etc. Uh, what are your sort of favorite people, including people like Jeff Senior, you like to catch up with? You know, Jeff, I'm always in touch with, really. You know, Jeff and I, whenever we can, we meet up in London or wherever for a for a, a drink and a catch-up. And, you know, we're both going to be at London Comic-Con at the beginning of March, so we'll get to get to sort of catch up again there. But, you know, just generally, I, I always relish the chance to be at a convention when there's a broad range of people and... You know, we have monthly get togethers with comic professionals or just people associated with the business. And so, yeah, any any of the social sides I absolutely love. And and that's the great thing with conventions. And this, you know, this year at TF, TF UK Con, I will get to be with Andrew, who I actually haven't seen apart from a very brief run in at a convention last year. I've I've hardly had a chance to sort of sit down and have a chat to. So that's another big pull towards uh, Birmingham in May. This was another one of the questions from um, from Facebook. Uh, so Gav Morton, uh, another big Transformers fan, uh, he was asking, it, "Have you ever? I'm sure you've thought about this a lot. If you were a Transformer yourself, what would you want to transform into? What would you think would be your dream alt mode? Hmm. I, I think I'd probably opt for a jet or something very fast. A yeah, fine I'd choice. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely think, you know, something along the seeker lines would be good for me. <laughs> I would as well. I, that's why I'm a Grig so much. It's always been about the jets for me. This is Drew from Facebook. I've altered his question slightly. Stanley always appears in um, his 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 uh, his uh, writing. So I remember seeing him in the Amazing Spider Man. He appeared in the last episode of the that that Marvel version. Obviously, he appeared in a lot of the live action movies as well. So my so the dual question is: Would you ever like to appear in a comic version of yourself, or uh, in a live action movie, or if there was a movie of your life, who would play you? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, in the first instance, I you know I would love to be in a walk on part in a Transformers movie someday. That that would be great fun. You know, absolutely. I mean, <coughs> you know, it's it's we're coming up rapidly on the 40th anniversary of transformers so you know i mean it it would be almost the fulfillment of a career thing to be yeah just a little cameo walk on in a movie sometime um god who played me i don't know um you know who's young handsome and uh you know <laughs> sort of uh you know just would would possibly kind of do me justice <laughs> <laughs> The trouble is, you know, it, it's almost yeah, it's volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> well, Simon, mean, thanks so much for coming on. You've been a fantastic sport, and we really do appreciate it. And um, so, bye from me, bye from Andy and Alexis, and bye from Simon. Bye all. Bye all. <laughs>